Awesome, there we go. Hello everybody. Welcome to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. Holy smokes, season seven. We're Look at my face, I'm so red right now. We are kicking off season seven of the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. I could not be more thrilled and excited to be bringing this season to you. We have tons of great guests lined up. And actually, I have a very special guest in front of me tonight, uh, Dr. Cliff Tao, and he is a DC a practicing doctor of chiropractic, and he is also a DAC bar, which is a licensed chiropractic radiologist. And we're going to talk all about what that means to you as a chiropractic student, as a as a recent chiropractic school graduate. And we're also going to talk about what that means to you in regards if you're 30, 40 years out in chiropractic practice, because he is this important to you if you are any of those people. So listen into this episode. It's going to be a phenomenal episode. And he is tuning in tonight from Orange County, California. He is all the way out on the West Coast, living the California dream and loving life. So with that being said, I am going to cut to a sponsor reel. When we get back, Dr. Cliff is going to dive all into his story, how he ended up where he is today, and all of the hard work that really goes into the credentials that he holds behind his name. So when we get back from thanking our sponsors, we are going to dive all into it. We'll see you in a little bit. To Inspire Women is the elite boutique coaching company for chiropractors who are looking to live life and run business in a way that is personal, unique, and authentic. They focus on business systems and money mindset mastery so you can pay down debt, be more profitable, and serve more people. Their goal is to empower you to achieve success by your own rules and your own definition. Head to toinspirewomen.com now because they know there's a better way. Cairo HD superior cloud-based practice management software. Cairo HD is a user-friendly all-in-one EHR solution built with one mission, to help you run your practice like a boss. Learn more at CairoHD.com. Dr. Brad Glowacki runs one of the highest volume, highest profile, highest profitability practices in the world. And it's all run with vitalistic communication procedures. Those procedures from his office are then shared with other chiropractors at his various trainings as a part of level up mentoring. This information is created, developed, tested, and then packaged simplistically before being taught. With bruises and scars from making mistakes, Dr. Glow always delivers refined content that is battle tested and simplified for use on Monday. To level up your life and practice, head over to levelupmentoring.rocks. That's levelupmentoring.rocks. Total Clinic Solutions is your go-to source for purchasing both brand new and refurbished chiropractic equipment, as well as phone support for repairs and maintenance. Call Derek and allow him to combine your wishes and his 23 years of chiropractic equipment expertise to find what's best for you and your patients at 704 622 4089 or head to totalclinicsolutions.com now. It's time that chiropractors look beyond spinal alignments and measure the nerve connections that keep our patients feeling strong and performing at their peak. CLA designed the Insight scanning technologies to transform exams and generate powerful reports that give practitioners the certainty they have been searching for. Learn how CLA has partnered with practices around the world by going to Insight CLA. Dot com. Easily share your passion for chiropractic and look good doing it with Above Down Apparel, offering a premium lineup of principled apparel that's impossibly soft, sustainably sourced, and chiropractic AF. Visit AboveDown.co and follow them on Instagram to learn more and score yourself some sweet chiro swag. SCED is the all-in-one system that allows for amazing control and flexibility of your scheduling. Yes, your next new hire. Every aspect of when and where you service your customers is at your command. SCED is tightly integrated with your existing EHR system. This software was made by a chiropractor specifically for chiropractic. No joke. Go check out their latest care plan feature by heading to go.sked.life/ Legendary Pod. 
Dr. David Tuhill is an innovative product and marketing strategist, bridging the gap between your vision and strategic plan. He will help you design specific products and processes that are both scalable and set up to produce long-term revenue and growth. He has previously worked with influencers that include Dr. Josh Axe, Jordan Rubin of Ancient Nutrition, Olympic gold medalist Sean Johnson, and many, many others. Schedule your call with Dr. Dave today by heading to meetwithdrdave.com. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. Phenomenal. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the legendary chiropractor podcast. Like I said before this sponsor break, I could not be more thrilled and excited to be sitting down with you again for season seven of the legendary chiropractor podcast. We are sitting down tonight with Dr. Cliff Tao. He is a DC and a DAC bar, which you will become very familiar with that last term that I just said after tonight's show. He's going to walk us through his story. He's going to walk us through his credentials. And then we're going to dive into board conversations. How do we pass boards as chiropractic students? Specifically, how do you pass the radiology portions and how do you pass part four? Those are the biggest things that a lot of people struggle with. And then we're going to talk about what we need to do to maintain our imaging knowledge, no matter if that be radiographs or if that be special imaging that we're reading or we're sending over to Dr. Cliff to read for us in order to diagnose somebody with something right? That is serious and causing their problems. So I'm really excited about tonight's show. I'm going to learn a lot. I know that for a fact. So doc, without further ado, please jump right into it. Introduce yourself, tell your story a little bit, where you come from, how you got here, and then we'll dive into your credentials. All right. Well, thank you very much uh, for having me, Johnny. And uh, hi, everybody. It's uh, a little bit odd for me because uh, usually I, I speak in front of people and Johnny has assured me that there are tons of people on the other side of the camera. So, <laughs> uh, right? Absolutely. So we'll, we'll get going. So, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a, a chiropractor and a chiropractic radiologist, and uh, I practice uh, full time radiology. Uh, some DAC bars do a little bit of both, uh, but I do full time radiology, and we have uh, a few associates that help me out. We have a couple of staff. Uh, they all work remotely, so it's a little bit different than a typical chiropractic practice. And uh, our market is a little bit different. You know, we're not just local now with, with digital x-ray and imaging. We, we can go nationwide and, and a little bit beyond as well. Uh, and so how I got started is uh, a little bit interesting, depending, well, maybe not, we'll see. My, uh, my dad is actually a medical radiologist, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it, uh, to be honest. I don't know if it's just some innate thing that he has and and, then, and I have and we just like looking at pictures and analyzing things uh, or if it's you know something he implanted in my brain when I was like a baby or something <laughs> so uh, I don't know so there's that and uh, you know I like just pictures myself and I think if you look at a lot of radiologists they're also photographers or amateur photographers and, and stuff like that and uh, so I wanted to do something health related, you know, cause I was just fascinated by the human body, interested in it, I loved anatomy, uh, no idea about radiology, not no idea, but you know, I just wanted to be a chiropractor because that was a, a cool way to, to look at people and to assess them and to treat them. And it's actually a, a sports chiro that got me interested. So I was heavily into sports, you know, I got my, my CCSP, the certified chiropractic sports doc thing, my CSCS, the certified strength and conditioning specialist. My undergrad was in kinesiology, so I was all heavily into rehab and all that stuff. And then uh, I met a chiropractic radiologist when I was in school and I was like, you know, what, what is this? You know, I, I, I couldn't turn back. Uh, So I, you know, since then I've, I've, you know, really loved just, looking at pictures and being able to figure things out. Uh, one other thing uh, I think is interesting, uh, at least in our in the chiropractic world, is that you know the specialty of, of radiology within chiropractic kind of was born because the medical guys didn't want anything to do with us. Hmm. I mean, this was a long time ago. And then so, you know, the pioneers back then were like, uh, okay, you know, we have x-rays, we're taking them, and, 
you know, we need some expert advice and we're coming to you, but yet you're snubbing us. So, okay, we're going to start training our own. We're going to find a couple medical radiologists who are nice to us and we'll get them to, to train us. And, uh, and that's how it started. And so it all started because uh, the medical profession was was kind of giving us the cold shoulder. Now it's a little bit different. Uh, it's not you know 100% better, but it's a lot better. Uh, but we're still around, and I still think we do uh, a great job at at looking at X-rays, MRI, CTs, and and other types of imaging. And uh, I think it's a it's a good way to uh, you know if you use a, a DAC bar, it, and I would. You know, I, I realized I'm, I'm I'm very biased here. I, I would recommend a DAC bar if you don't have one uh, over a medical radiologist if you have in-office X-ray. And you know, I I used to say, and you, Johnny, you've probably seen this in in practice by now. You know, sometimes you get these X-rays or uh, you know the reports back from a hospital or an imaging center, and 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 you look at the X-rays, obviously, and you're like, you know, what are they, what are they talking about, or wow. <laughs> You know, how did they not see this uh, little osteophyte or something? And you know, I, I used to say, you know, they, you know, they must be blind or they're just dumb or something. But but you know, they're they're not dumb, right? They went to medical school. They they have a brain. They they pass their exams and stuff like that. And it's it's really because they're too busy. And it's you know, it's just a job to them most of the time. You know, I don't want to speak too poorly of them because a lot of them are, are my friends too but they're smart people they're just uh, you know i i don't have pity for them necessarily but right. uh, you know they're, not funny, but they're super busy uh you know just as an example if you want to get into numbers you know on a, on a, on a busy day i'll read like 50 to 60 x-rays uh and it's not comfortable for me you know i want to do a thorough job which takes time i want to do a good job get all the detail in there and that's my max amount. I can't go any faster. Uh, very common for a medical rheologist to read 200 in a day. Wow. So that's, uh, you know, two and a half to three times uh, my max volume. Right. And they have more complex cases. So they don't have time to, you know, look at stuff thoroughly. They get all the big stuff and, you know, make sure they don't miss the big stuff. So all the little things, you know, it just takes too long for them to dictate it. And, yeah. and they're, they don't have time to put it in there. So, uh, you know, with that framework, you know, I, I think we can see how, you know, why it happens. And, you know, I don't want to get into this uh, this fight about who's better and, and who's not better. But they really are good, but they're they're in this, uh, you know, bad situation, as you know, with, with health care as it is. Right, right. Absolutely. And I think I think that was a great example and great way to put it. And I also would argue that, um, first of all, I want to apologize because my nice camera apparently died. So now we're off my webcam. So here we are um, just rocking with technology, just doing what we can to be the best we can. Um, but uh, I, I want to also mention that sometimes something that isn't relevant to them, right, that might not be like a supreme diagnosis um, is especially relevant to a chiropractor, how they're going to adjust and how they're going to continue with their treatment plan. Um, and I, I would argue, like you said, kind of some of those smaller things that we don't, that they probably don't even think about, or that like maybe an osteophyte in the IVF or something like that, like that's going to change, you know, the care, the, the, the healing rate, all of that stuff. Right. And it's like, it's like, how much can we actually do here? And that to me, is a really important piece, right? But to someone else, they're looking for cancer, they're looking for, you know, broken bones, they're looking for real, like, big, big things, like you said. Um, so I appreciate that explanation. I think that's really, really cool. And um, Doc, real quick, before we get into boards, talk to us about the credentials of a DAC bar. What do you need to do? What kind of schooling is there? Um, and, uh, and, and talk to us a little bit about that. Sure, uh, and you're absolutely right about that, you know. Uh, how you know we need stuff that that we need to see on the x-ray but they're kind of their focus is different and yeah. cancer and broken bones of course are important to rule out uh but you gotta you know i say you know we're or we're mostly all of us are like concierge type of practices and we take care of our patients uh and we take care of you know more than just what they're coming in with we're right. kind of you know more thorough uh, exactly yeah yeah uh Anyway, yeah, you know, the, the DAC bar process is, 
uh, you know, some people think it's, well, I don't know. It, it, it's, I guess it's all over the place. Some people think it's really hard. Uh, and some people maybe just don't have any idea and, and maybe think it's, it's kind of easy. Um, you know, I, I actually, I, to be honest, I didn't do a whole lot of research into, uh, before I went into it and I thought, you know, I did pretty good in, in rheology and in some of the other classes. Uh, and I, I thought I, I thought I knew it, you know, and, uh, somehow I, I got into a program and, and I went in there and dude, Johnny, it was like, all of a sudden I didn't know anything. I'm like, what in the world? You know, I, I just spent whatever, three, four years in Carl school, hundred grand or, or so. And, and, uh, and, you know, I have some stuff to show for, but right. you know, these guys in the residency already, they were, I was like, where are you pulling this stuff out of, you know? How come I didn't learn that in school? So, so we do learn a ton of stuff in Cairo school. It's hard, you know. I get it. Uh, actually, not many people know this, but I actually failed a course in chiropractic school. Uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but you know, so it you happens. can't get into <laughs> to radiology even though you failed a, a class here and there. It was early on, and it was honestly because I was working too much, doing jobs and trying to you know make money basically. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so the the Dakbar program, if you get in, uh, it is hard. You know, it's like chiro school. It's it's what you make of it. It's it's three years minimum, uh, and it's full time radiology. Uh, you got to teach. You have classes. We call them sessions, and they're usually small. It's no more than five or six people per class. So it's uh, you know no sleeping in the class. Uh, that was my issue. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you, you can't slack off. And these classes are with with one or two DAC bars in there, and they're they're peppering you with questions all the time. You're like, hey, Johnny, give me the top six differentials for uh, you know unilateral consolidation, the left middle lobe of lung. And you just gotta you know if you don't know it, they're gonna know right away. Like right. In a second or two. <laughs> or if you only get three out of six, like what about the other three, Johnny? <laughs> you're like, oh. So. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely, uh, you know, plays with your mind a little bit in, in the residency. Uh, it's hard, uh, but, you know, and, and I take uh, calls from students every probably about once a month or every other month, uh, someone that's interested in the radiology residency. And, uh, you know, for my, my only requirement for, for someone to, to do it is that either you, you, you know, you got to have the passion to love radiology, and if not, you know, you better get it by the time right. you get there or soon after you start because uh, you're not going to last for years. I know plenty of people that have started the radiology residency and uh, and quit. Just uh, they couldn't handle it. Yeah, it, it's tough, it, especially after going to Carl school and doing all the boards, you know, getting your license. And then you got to do another three years. And it's, uh, I'd say, a harder. Uh, but if it's something you love, it makes it go uh, a lot quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, just as an example, uh, you know we, you know we talk about this all the time. We have our our DAC bar meetings because it's kind of funny, but our uh, our program, you know, we, so we have at the end if you pass the exams, there's there's board exams, there's a written one, and there's a practical exam. Uh, the written one, you know, we have a cram session that starts usually around Christmas, uh, but it's 16 weeks long. So just imagine uh, cramping or not cramping, cramming for 16 weeks and then taking a, I think it's a two or three day uh, written exam. And if you pass that, then a few months later you have a practical. And uh, that to me is a little bit easier because I like, you're just looking at pictures and telling people what's on them. Right. Uh, but it's, it's a little more nerve wracking because you're sitting in front of someone that's kind of has a checklist to make sure you're, you're, you're saying things right and getting all the all the findings yeah so it's a, it's a little bit like part four yeah absolutely and i i heard it i mean it, just rumor wise i've heard it's one of the hardest tests in all any healthcare profession um is the chiropractic radiology final exam and practical written exam and practical so oh. um i mean i i don't know if that's I true that. i don't know if that holds water but hey I, I'm I'm here to spread that rumor if you want me to. <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go and thank our sponsors here, and when we come back, we're talking all about how to pass part four boards in the radiology section specifically, as well as um, just in general on how to best apply what you learn in the classroom to truly applying it on an exam. So. 
We'll be right back from thanking our sponsors. And when we get back, we're talking all about more radiology. Every chiropractic clinic needs a compliance program. If you are not sure what that includes or why you need one, let Dr. Robin from RHDC Consulting help you build your chiropractic compliance. If you are ready to get started, head to robin halemykajabicom and let Dr. Robin guide you to the end result. Dr. Christy Wick is revamping the landscape of women's chiropractic coaching. With a focus on connection and congruence, she's on a mission to empower lady DCs across the nation to create bold, successful lives and practices their way. Get started today by visiting theilluminatedsquad.com. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. All right, we are back and live here at the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. All right, Doc, run us through the, let's start like board review through boards. Let's go, let's take that whole journey for people and really run us through what should be going through our heads, how should we be studying, um, what kind of materials are most important to understand, and really how to apply them on these national exams. So go ahead, Doc. All right. So uh, let's start with part four. Uh, you know, it seems most pressing. I think it's coming up soon. Uh, you know, so part four, I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Johnny, is uh, at least for the radiology portion, you know, they give you an x-ray to look at and they might give you like a, a short history and and you got to come up with uh, some findings, I think, uh, and like a differential. Uh, and so so that's very similar to to the part two of, of our radiology boards and how i studied for that is i just looked at a ton of x-rays and now it's so easy you know when i took it you know i had to go get books and stuff like that and you can do that too so i wouldn't even bother reading stuff i mean you can obviously but i would you know i would look at it i mean i don't know how many i looked at just thousands and thousands of pictures x-rays uh, but you read the the little caption underneath so you get a, a quick gist of, you know, know what it is. Uh, and the purpose of that is to know that, uh, say, Paget's disease can look like, you know, a million different things. So you're used to seeing, uh, you know, textbook examples, but also some other examples of what Paget's could look like. Yeah. Uh, that way you're, it's, it's like exposure. It's kind of like experience, right? You're looking at a, a, just a ton of different x-rays of of uh, of different conditions uh, and so uh yeah so and there's so many sites out there uh, you know you just google radiology like radiopedia is one uh there's radiologylearning.net uh, there's some antmini.com uh and so yeah i just look at a lot of different cases uh of and you can you know do different conditions you know i want to see uh pars defects uh I want to see spinal lysis, spinal lysthesis, you know, just do that or just flip through a textbook or something and just look at all the pictures, super easy, super quick. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's not uh, easy. And, you know, just when you think you're, you want to take a break, sure, take a break, but, you know, do it again. Just look at all the pictures again <laughs> and, and re cement it in your head. Yeah. Uh, that part is, is not too bad to me because I love pictures. You know, I don't like reading long things. I like reading just a couple lines here and there. That works perfect for me. Yeah. You know, part one, two, and three was super hard for me. I, I hate just memorizing things. I don't know about uh, you guys out there, but uh, it's just, that's the only way to do it, at least. You know, so I would, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but repetition is the mother of learning. You know, just think about, just, just you got to be a robot, man. You just, <laughs> just got to read it, read it again highlight read it again just read the highlights and then you know read it again uh and uh you know one of my i don't know if this is just because i'm asian or chinese or what but you know they're like what it's only uh i think it was my aunt she's like it's only three years out of your life but you know who cares you know when you're done i'm like oh geez you know <laughs> so uh yes yeah, think about it that way it's three years you know work hard you know get it done with who wants to take boards again right nobody right I'm pretty sure right you know just, uh, you know, study hard, study again, and, you know, get it done with, pass it, and, and move on. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's a tough part, I think, about one, two, and three. It's just it's just a lot of data. 
uh, although I remember on part three, I, they did show a picture of an x-ray. So uh, I don't know if they still do that, but yep. it was like one question. It was uh, actually, it was a L5. It was an ADP lumbar with the spondylolysis or pars defect on an ADP view. So a little bit tricky, but, but uh, at least I think that's what it is. I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I would say everything, that's a great tip. That's exactly what I did. I mean, even before studying for, um, like, my radiology classes in chiropractic school, I would, I, we had a PowerPoint full of pictures and different versions and variations of conditions, and it was, like, 300 slides long of just pictures and, like, a caption. Or, like, it was a picture... Or it was 600 slides and it was a picture and then the answer was the next slide and then a picture and then the answer. So you just scrolled through that and it was like the perfect thing to do. But if you wanted more information on it, um, you could go look in Yoko Monroe. You could go look in some of the other uh, radiology textbooks that are out there and just really start to indulge or, or kind of understand it at a further and deeper level if that was what you were studying for um yeah but what you said was accurate part four is all like you go into the room you read the x-ray or they give you like a case um because they give you x-ray on the actual practical and they also give you x-ray on the sit down like stare at a screen radiology portion right so you're like looking at a picture for like three seconds it feels like and you're like wait what was that and then you just have to like read the description and they give you like a brief history and then you pick out of the four answers or eight answers whatever they give you um and then there is some like if you go into a room you take a history on somebody there might be an x-ray to follow up with that history in the next room so you still have to know what you're looking at and what you're looking for um, and because it might not be the answer that they're looking for, but it might be in the differentials and you have to put it because it's on the x-ray. So you have to, you kind of have to play that game. Um, and then part three, you're absolutely right. Now they actually, I, I don't know if you know this, but they have, uh, vignettes. So they have, um, 10 different questions on part three. So they give you like a full case of one person. Here's their problem. Here's their history. And then you get an x-ray and you have a certain amount of time to answer the nine questions that come after it. Um, or three questions really and then nine total answers that go with it because you have to pick differentials and follow up cases and all that. So that was a good breakdown of boards. I mean, in all, all reality, there is a lot of radiology on boards and you have to know, even on part two, they'll throw in like terminology that you should know from your radiology classes. So. Um, you definitely, you definitely got to be on top of this stuff. Um, so doc, I want to do one last thing. I want to, I want to take a quick, another quick break. And then when we come back, I want to talk to you about staying on top of our imaging, staying on top of our CEs, all of that stuff while we're in practice as DCs. And then I want to drop your link to your website and get people to reach out to you. Okay. Sounds good. Thank cool. you. Dr. Stu Hoffman, founder and president of ChiroSecure Malpractice Insurance, is the foremost expert in both risk management and risk avoidance. Understanding the everyday challenges of today's practicing chiropractor and the current public perception of chiropractic has made ChiroSecure the fastest growing malpractice insurance program of the last 28 years. Find out more at ChiroSecure.com. Imaging Services' primary business is chiropractic solutions. With over 45 years in the industry of helping chiropractors, Michael Tokash offers free consultations on building your business. In the past year, Imaging Services has installed over 100 x-ray machines and digital x-ray systems in over 42 states across the United States. For more, head to theimagingservices.com. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. All right. All right. We are back and live with Dr. Cliff Tao. So, Doc, talk to us about how to stay on top of our imaging as practicing doctors of chiropractic and why it's so important to be on top of your imaging game when you are practicing DC, taking films in your practice. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, you know, it, it really helps if, uh, you know, just in the name of, of keeping on top of things, if you look at a lot of x-rays. So, uh, you know, looking at a lot of x-rays, getting used to, you know, 
your images from, from your machine. You know, I know there's some some docs out there with, you know, that don't have you know textbook crisp images, but you know, you got to get used to looking at the images from your machine with that certain contrast and certain density that you have on your machine, and just looking at them all the time. You know, if you Again, you know, my bias, you know, if you have a, a good report from a, a good radiologist, a DAC bar, you know, uh, preferably, then you can use that to, you know, to kind of learn and stay on top of things. Uh, you know, if you don't have uh, that much volume at the get-go when, when you're out there, you know, it, it's the time to just kind of like starting from part four, you know, with, with less pressure, right? Just look at a lot of pictures, you know, stay on top of things. You can subscribe to, to different things. Uh, I think I'll uh, we'll mention it later, but you know my my uh, I'm on LinkedIn and, and Facebook, and I post an interesting case usually uh, once a week or so, and these are all cases that come from chiropractors, so uh, I think that they're pretty relevant most of the time. Uh, and so that that's one way to do it. Uh, another way, of, of course, is to, you know you got to maintain your your CE, and you know I would say, you know I hate wasting anything, so. You know, don't go to CE and just to get your hours and, you know, learn something and, and, and you know, make yourself better, make your patients better and take care of your patients better. Mm -hmm. uh, find some CE that you love, you know, where you can learn something and uh, and get your CE that way. Uh, so, so those are two, two different things. Look at a lot of pictures and, uh, you know, make sure your CE is, is relevant to what you like to do and learn something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to drop your link at the bottom of the screen now. I want you to kind of chat with us about your website, how people can find out more information about you, and then give us some closing remarks and thoughts on, on the end of this discussion here. Oh, yeah, sure. So, yeah, if you go to my website, that's a good way to get a hold of me. There's like a quick contact form there you can fill out. It takes a few seconds to fill out. You can Google me on, on Facebook and LinkedIn. I'm, I'm pretty active on there. Um, I'm a part of a lot of uh, Facebook groups, and so uh, you know I'll offer an opinion here and there. Uh, so you could probably find me on there. But I'm generally pretty responsive. Uh, you know, I, I like to tell uh, docs that have a lot of volume. You know, yeah, I do better if you send me more x-rays, but, you know, the goal is to make it routine and to make you a better doctor. So, you know, if you make it routine and just send all your x-rays, you know, then, you know, you obviously you still have to look at the x-rays, but I think it would actually save you time in the end, too. You know, instead of trying to hum and haw over a certain finding, you know, do your report of findings, obviously, because the patient's right there. But, you know, send it to a DAC bar, send it to me, uh, you know, or send it to another DAC bar. You know, the, the goal is to get, you know, recognize our, our specialists within chiropractic, especially, uh, and use them to your advantage, use them to your patient's advantage. Uh, streamline your process and, you know, get those x-rays read. And of course, reliability per spreads out the liability a little bit more in case, I mean, it's rare, but uh, in case something happens later, you can say, oh, my, that's what Cliff Tao said. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, uh, yeah. But, yeah, for sure. Well, so uh, you, his link is at the bottom of the screen, Cliff Tao, DC, DACbar.com. That's C-L-I-F-F-T-A-O, DC, D-A-C-B-R.com. So you can see that right at the bottom of the screen there. Head there, fill out the contact form. Why not reach out to him? If you're practicing low volume, high volume, doesn't really matter. Get your x-rays, your, your radiographs read because that's what's going to save you. And like he said at the end there, I don't know if you missed it. It kind of cut out, but it, it spreads the liability. It spreads the liability of you reading the films. And if you are high volume, if you are super high volume and you don't really, like he said, it's kind of more time efficient. If you don't have the time to put in to reading and you, you hem and haul over findings, don't stop wasting time, right? Send them off, get them read, get a professional report done and actually focus in on giving that patient the best care possible. Um, like he said, obviously do your, your report of findings, but if something comes up on that report, you know, two, three days later, then you can address that when that time comes, if it's not a dire circumstance. Um, so I'm really excited about this, Doc. I appreciate you, all that you do for the profession. I know that he is extremely active on Facebook. So if you are on Facebook, um, hop into the, I think there's a group called Radiology Cases or something like that on Facebook for chiropractors. And I know you post in there quite a bit or you comment in there quite a bit saying, hey, I think you should probably get this read by a DAC bar. Um, but 
But the, he's super active on social media. LinkedIn's another big one for him. So reach out to him, contact him. If you need your uh, films read, um, he's your go-to guy. And I appreciate you, Doc. I thank you for being on the show. Season 7, episode 1 to of the Chiropractor Podcast. I could not be more thrilled um, that you're sitting with us. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. And, um, yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Bye, everyone.